When I was in the hospital, it wasn't the type of helping I wanted to do. It scared me more, and I wanted more positivity and light mm -hmm. and happiness, and I wanted to transform mindsets. And because it was starting to happen, because I was starting my own physical and emotional journey at home while I was raising my baby. I was on food stamps, I was on WIC. It was so humbling. Welcome back to Crafted Entrepreneur. And I am pumped because today we have a special guest, not only for you, but it's my first time meeting her in person. And I'm so excited because she's been inside of my mastermind. And it's fun to just like finally meet this amazing woman in person. She is the CEO and founder of Power Performance Wellness Recovery. Oh my gosh. And she's also the host of the amazing, you just rebranded the podcast to Mom Bob. Boss Maximizer, right? Yeah, yeah. So the Power Podcast and Mom Boss oh, Maximizer. It's, oh, and the two Power Podcast. Yes. She has two podcasts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she's a force in her industry when it comes to health and wellness. We were just talking before she's been in the network marketing space for over a decade, mm -hmm. really, and really seen like the trends and what's changing in that world. So I'm definitely going to get into that with her, but I'm excited to get into your story and just see all of the people you're gonna impact from telling your story today. And I know we're gonna get some practical tips to take away as well for all of the entrepreneurs at any stage in your business. Mm -hmm. So welcome Brittany Burnham to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Yay. so honored and excited. Oh my goodness, you're <laughs> more beautiful in person. Oh my gosh. Than virtually. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we see each other on Zoom every week, right? Yeah. Okay, so I wanna dive right in and ask, how did you get your start in health and wellness? Mm. I was always an athlete my whole life, but never really dug deep into it until I was going through a really rough patch of my life. I transformed my mindset when I was a single parent. Mm. And- How old were you? 30, 31. Okay. Yeah, so I'm about 11 years ago, I'm 41 now. Okay. And uh, single parent, I was in an abusive relationship abusive relationship, moved in with my mom. And okay, wait, you can't just slide on by the abusive relationship. I know, relationship see, I just. <laughs> because it's like, whoa, okay, so. We're not crying today. No, this we, happens a lot when I go back. Well, I, I, I think it's important because there might be yeah. somebody listening in right now mm -hmm. who's going through what you've already overcome. Yeah. You know, so if you don't mind, can we talk about that? Absolutely, and it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so it means a lot to me, thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you found yourself, you already had the baby and the uh, relationship became abusive? Or? I, was, I was pregnant. I was oh in it gosh. for two years. I was, in, I was actually, actually an athletic director of an all-girls charter high school in Albany. Okay. And That's amazing. I stayed in it thinking that things were going to change. I uh, saw the potential in him, the good in him. Yep. And when I became pregnant, things changed that I knew I had to get out. Mm -hmm. There was a bigger purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So um, luckily I finally spoke up and there were so many red flags. You know, there, there was a, a lot of times and I lost f some friendships during that time because they saw it and I wanted to protect him. I was ashamed, I was embarrassed and I'm portraying myself as an educator of an all girls school of being this powerful, independent, strong woman. Right. So it was really hard to have that imposter feeling. And um, that's when I moved with my mom. Yeah, so I was 30, I moved with my mom I, and I uh, ended up transitioning completely. I left being an educator and when I was pregnant, I thought it was so cool to have a baby inside me. So I was in a very transitional season, obviously, but I went back to college and I wanted to be an ultrasound tech. And uh, wow, that's, that's I went to a be a change. I, I, it was a huge change. And so, but you, but you're in this mindset of like survivor. Yes. Right. You're like, okay. And, and do you have the confidence? Like, how did you get the confidence to leave? <sighs> because I did not want to die. Mm. There was many points where that feeling was in my face. And um, I've always wanted to be a parent. And I come from a very healthy background with my parents. And I wanted that. So I knew this just was not, this wasn't the right person. And this wasn't the right, and, I'm, and I was more capable 
you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. So I've always been a confident woman, and I come from a family of confident women who have experienced a lot of trauma, divorce, abuse. So I so I didn't want to, you know, keep that generational curse. Curse. Happening. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. What, so what were the red flags in that relationship, though? Looking back, like. What was it that attracted you to him in the first place? Mm. Well, it goes back. It goes back because of trust because of my father. And I love my father and I've forgiven, I've forgiven him and we're still working on a relationship to this day. But my parents were married for 30 years. And when I was in grad school in Philadelphia, that's when the trauma started. I never experienced any trauma until I was 22. And my father was living a double life. He came out, he was an alcoholic, uh, multiple affairs, and he was my hero my whole life. He was my coach. So it was a real big loss. And your foundation is shattered at mm -hmm, that moment. Mm -hmm. Trust. Mm -hmm. So I chose someone very similar like my father, not in that type of domestic abuse, but, you know, narcissistic, dissociative, and charming, handsome, You had like a trauma bond with him. Yes. Almost. Yes. Yes. Mm, Wow. Therapy right now. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, hey, Coach Kayla's, you know, I can't get her away. Yeah. So, wow. Okay. So you've overcome all of that. Mm -hmm. You have the confidence because this baby is building inside of you and you're like, I got to get out now Mm -hmm. because I've got to survive. And you pivot to create a new career, which that takes a lot of confidence and belief in yourself. So tell me about how you had the confidence. Like, were there practices where you were doing? Was it some faith that you had that you're like, I I can do all things through Christ? Like, Mm, no, I lost a lot of my faith during this time. Yep. Okay. A lot. And I knew I wanted to help people and I know I belonged in some type of health and wellness. And, but when I was in the hospital, it wasn't the type of helping I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I, when I had the hands-on experience, it scared me more and I wanted more positivity and light Mm -hmm. and happiness. And I wanted to transform mindsets and because it was starting to happen because I was starting my own physical and emotional journey at home while I was raising my baby. I was on food stamps. I was on WIC. It was so humbling. Mm -hmm. And my mother was incredible. She completely constructed the basement and made a room for us. So it was one of those things that, okay, I had to find plan B, C, D, (laughs) D, all all of them. And I was looking back into, once I realized, and I did great in school, I I love to learn. And when I took the anatomy and physiology class and wanted to learn more about the body, that's when I was like, okay, there's something deeper here. And that's where becoming a personal trainer Mm. really triggered triggered that. So you wanted to be on the proactive health instead of the where, I mean, I was an ER nurse, you're in the hospital that's your, they're already very sick mm-hmm. and there's a, not a lot, like you kind of feel hopeless it was in those de- situations. It was depressing. Yeah. Because yes. you're like, I can't really do much. Yeah. And you see the same people coming back in again and again. And I was in the trauma unit. Mm. So, oof. yeah. But when I'm thinking of ultrasound, I'm thinking of babies and all these great things. And then when I had the internship down with the ultrasounds, I'm like, no, yeah, it's still like, not all the, all the rainbows that I'm thinking, like, happy <laughs> babies. <laughs> Oh. Okay, so you yeah. get into being a personal trainer, mm-hmm. and and then you realize to be a personal trainer, that's a whole business. Yes. So yes. you don't have any business background. No. How do you become no. successful? At this? I had no mentor, and that was the difficult part. And that's one thing that that the advice I give people mm-hmm. is reach out and ask, because I was reaching out to anyone that would be that would give me any type of feedback and support and help on what do I do to start something because I transformed my body, but I first transformed my mind and I was realizing I had so much more confidence again. I was feeling like myself Mm -hmm. from when I was an educator and I was a coach of young girls. So I just formed a little workout called hit it with Brit in my mom's backyard of like eight women. Mm -hmm. And I just found, and I found coolers, chairs, whatever just we could use because Mama was broke and uh, it was, it was fun. And my friend photoshopped this picture of myself doing a push up on a tire. And I look back and it's so funny. It's, but like, I just took action. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was working three jobs. You know, I was waitressing, I was bartending. And then I was trying to start this business between 
11 p.m. and 3 a.m. Oh and gosh. it's, you know. And you did it. Yeah. So it takes the grittiness. Lots you know? of grit, and lots I of resilience. That's what a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, it looks very glamorous online mm-hmm. to be an entrepreneur because you get to make your own hours and you yeah. get to be your own boss. But then when you get into it, you're like, okay, I have got to be gritty because it is not for the weak at heart. So, I mean, obviously your life experience made you gritty, Mm -hmm. getting out of that domestic violence Mm -hmm. situation, being a mom. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the person listening in right now that is kind of struggling with that, like, grittiness? Like, Mm. they need to build some up. Oh, that's a good question. You know, keep moving forward. Keep looking forward and yeah, keep looking forward. Keep right? looking That's forward. Good. I always say like, don't look in that rearview mirror. Look mm-hmm. through that through that windshield mm-hmm. and stay in your lane. Like, keep just focused. Like, you have to have a focus. Yep. You have to stay committed to yourself. First yep. thing is me, and it's so hard to for us women, for us moms to put ourselves first. We can, I mean, it, we could go down a rabbit hole about that, <laughs> right? It is, but we're no good. We're no good if we are, for anyone else, if we are not taking care of ourselves. So that grit is when, once you feel that grit and you, that resiliency, that's when that the confidence mm-hmm. is cultivated. Mm-hmm. And then it's magnetic with, with other people. And then the, the community happens. Ooh, I love that. I like that you brought up the magnetism Mm -hmm. because I was, you know, researching for today's podcast and, you know, you're building a whole new brand right now. You're building these two podcasts out and really in order to bring an amazing uh, audience of listeners, you attract who you are, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you want to magnetize good things, right? So if you're like in a pit and you're negative all the time, you're complaining, mm. you know, you're focused on the past, what are you going to attract? Right. All the people that are focused on the past, they're going to find problems. But if you're, you know, looking at that windshield, like you said, and mm-hmm. you're focused on your future, you're going to attract people who are future focused, mm-hmm. who, who want to learn, who have that growth mindset, right? So, okay, that's how we're going to build grittiness. But also if I want to magnetize the right people, what else do I need to be doing? Mm. You need to be putting yourself out there, mm-hmm. and and know it's okay to mess up. It's okay to be afraid. Like embrace that discomfort. I say it all the time. And it, this is why owning a gym, starting a gym, and starting on health, like that freedom of health, really does transition to everything else in life. So once that confidence comes of the holistic health, the mental, the emotional, the physical then that's when everything starts to fall into place. Mm. Yeah. So you started a gym eventually Mm -hmm. and it's uber successful now. You have an amazing team and you have the podcast that comes from it. You know, what has been the hardest thing about getting this gym up and profitable? Oof. Well, we won't even talk about the pandemic because (laughs) that, but that was such a great blessing. It really was a blessing in disguise. The gym industry is still fairly new, believe it or not. We have well, especially the boutique gyms. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, and that's and that's what we are. Mm-hmm. We're strength and conditioning focused, personal training, and you know what I've really learned through being a gym owner is that it it's constantly evolving, and instead of having so much competition and having that mindset of competing with other gyms and other trainers, it really, it it happened during the pandemic. I'm seeing it more and more of working together. Mm. There's enough for everyone. And that goes for all businesses. It really does. Mm -hmm. The gym, the gym industry is tough because there's so many people aspiring to be you know, the next best trainer, we kind of joke about it, my team and I, and there's so many, there's so many people online who are wanting to give out their, you know, their recipes and their, but we, if we stay true to who we are and be authentic and find just one little thing that sets us apart, that's what is really the, the message of what we give to our community and for potential people who are interested, it just all goes back to our core values mm-hmm. and our mission and having to continuously spread that awareness. So we have evolved. It was hit it with Brit and it turned into, and we rebranded to power. And what we shifted, yes, was the name, but we still stayed true to our culture and to our core values. 
Yeah. Okay. I love that because community is everything. Mm -hmm. And how do you build a community? You've got to have the culture, you know? Yeah. So what would you say like in building out a powerful gym, creating this community and an awesome culture, what are maybe three tips that people could take away if they need to work on the culture in their community? Hmm. I know that's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. I always like people to leave with practical. Yeah, no, that's, it's, it's, I wish I was, uh, when, you know, if I fast, re- I'm sorry, rewound years ago, I wish I had more mentorship or was able to find more tips and advice with certain aspects like this. So one of the things with, with a gym and cultivating that is, our staff and our, the team, the mm-hmm. coaches. And when you're building that dream team, the biggest shift and game changer was going from a lot of part-time trainers to a full-time staff. Oh, that's a big, that's a big shift. Huge, yeah. huge. The first couple of years I had maybe 10 to 12 independent contractors and trainers and they had full-time jobs. And it was not only hard scheduling, but we had, and we had to respect their full-time job, but we're also not cultivating those relationships Mm -hmm. because how many of our members, and we had 500 members at this point where we don't know their names. I value so much. We value so much of that, those relationships mm-hmm. and knowing their names, knowing their kids' names, what they do. Yep. So that really has shifted. Having that full-time, full-focus mentality. Well, because everybody's bought in and they're also getting their livelihood mm-hmm. from that place. Yes. So they're going to they're gonna care more. Right. And the misconception with gyms, and, it, and it, I mean, let's take New York City. There's so many and there's a lot of uh, coaches and trainers that work at different that work at different gyms. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So with that, there's such a misconception that the trainers aren't educated and they just get a certification and they can get a job. Where it's so much different. And our my team has a whole group of mentors and are educated and have a curriculum that they are following. We've invested a lot in our education and awareness of how to properly, you know find do the pain points and coach our clients. So a tip, uh, you know, a tip to go back to like the first one is really have professionals. Our coaches are professionals and our mm-hmm. coaches are being educated and to have that full time, full focus mentality. Well, okay. So this is a good point for people who are just getting started, you know, and they need to bring that team around them. Maybe they don't have the business yet to mm-hmm. have the full time staff, right? Right. It's taken what do me you, a while. Yeah. What do you do to get the person to buy in and have that like, okay, we're, you're eventually going to be full time, Yeah. but it's not right now. Yes. You know, how, how do they cast that vision for people on their team? Those words, exactly what I use for every single one of my full-time staff right now. Ooh. Yes. And they all, for the majority, 95% of my full-time coaches are, were all members. So they already cultivated that culture. They already were bought into the brand and to what we represented and know our core values. So, you know, for example, my studio manager, she's been with me for six years and she is, she's my partner. She's, she's the yin to the, my yang, you know, and, and she runs everything from the front end to the back end, but she is the one who approached me and they all approached me. If you're looking for someone full time, I'm available. They all have taken risks in so different they, you're industries. A leader. That's what that tells me, though, is that you're a leader that people want to follow. Oh, well, I want to continue that. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. because if I mean, if people are going, hey, Cal, how can I work for you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how can I be a part of what you have going on? Yeah, you know? Yeah. So I love that. And and I think you're not just a, a leader that creates followers. I think you're a leader that creates leaders. Yes. You know? And that's and that was one of the biggest reasons why I rebranded to power is because I wanted to give the coaches and my team the autonomy to build that brand and to feel that this is part of them where they feel just as strongly as I do. I know it's my baby, but to speak on it, to represent it, to want to be there, go wake up every day and excited to go into mm-hmm. work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you really live out those core values 
teach and it sounds like you're just pouring into them, yes. which I think is, is so important. I mean, I know with my staff, I'm constantly thinking, how do I build them up? What yes. more experiences can I give them? Yeah. So that way they grow mm -hmm. and want to stay on long term. Yeah. And yeah. that's one of our core values is growth. If they were to say anything like, what does Brit love? What does she value most? It is that I want to constantly and just to see the transition of my team of how they have grown so much just in the past six months and the year mm. of being in our new facility is incredible. I'm so proud. I'm so grateful for them. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So you have the gym going on, but I know because I'm your coach, I see a lot more like you have a lot of opportunities in front of you right mm -hmm. now. And as entrepreneurs, I know everybody listening in is going to be able to relate to this where, I mean, we see everything as an opportunity, Oh yeah, which is a blessing. <laughs> and sometimes it feels like a curse. I think about you all the time. <laughs> this, this past week, there's been more opportunities. I'm like, stop saying yes to everything. Sorry, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's so hard. <laughs> right? So for somebody listening in right now, what do you do to go, okay, this is worth it, you know, to, to pursue this opportunity? And what do you classify as a distraction? Mm. I think about all of the bridges I'm trying to build. Mm. And... I can't finish building this one bridge because I am putting so much time into the three other bridges. So connecting that and filling that gap, I've experienced it and I'm sure you experienced it and still, and we're always going to experience because we're very ambitious women is our cup is overflowing and we want it to overflow, but in the ways what's going to put us in the right direction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that is, a struggle that I really, I, I, especially in this season right now, as you see, when we're on our master and I'm like, Kayla, I sound crazy because I'm going from this one and this opportunity, I'm thinking this. And I have to like sit back sometimes and, and ground myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying so hard to figure, figure it out because I am so confident in my ability to be able to serve and to use my gifts and to maximize my strengths. And I have a tendency to, you know, not be present and be distracted because there's so many other things that I want to do. Yeah. So it is, it's a struggle. I, it's very challenging, but it's also very exciting. Yeah. 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 So explain to me what you mean by the bridge. The bridge. Well, if I'm right here and I'm trying to, if I'm at point A and trying to get to point B, mm -hmm. how do we get there? What is that process? And I constantly communicate and talk to all my clients and, and everyone that we have to embrace the process. We have to oh, trust okay. the process. And so the bridge is a process. The bridge is the process. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. And it's, it's, and sometimes we tend to say like, how am I going to get from point A to point B? But it's more so who are we going to do it with? So that is why I came to you. That's why <laughs> I stress and emphasize so much about really finding your people and strength in numbers to, to lean on for that support because it is that bridge can, it can take a very long time to build a bridge or it can take a shorter time if you're just focused on one thing. So mm. if we're focused on for building four different bridges and our hands are in, you know, that many pots, then how long is it going to take? How long is that process? And there's no destination. That's where I definitely have, I challenge myself a lot with instant gratification, with getting things done mm. and then tend to over, over consume and yeah. Yeah. So what I'm hearing from you is you don't move on to the second bridge until you've completed the first bridge. Mm -hmm. So create the process. If you have an opportunity, create a process for that opportunity to cash flow to you. Mm -hmm. And then you get to go on to the next opportunity, create that bridge. Yes. I mean, I know you don't always do it perfectly, but that's really your mindset with yes. it is like, okay, I can, I can, if I can streamline the process to how this opportunity can continue to help me in my life, then I get to move on to the next thing. Yes. So that brings me to another question. How do you know when it's time to just let the bridge be half built mm. and just move on to the next one? Because you're like, am I, am I going after something that's just completely never going to happen? Yeah, that just happened to me. And I reached out to you about it. Remember? <laughs> the stem cells. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And I really 
heard and trusted and believed in the the people that were reaching out to me for this opportunity. And that's one of the toughest things too, is when the people that you trust. And so, but it's the, the timing. Yeah. So as much, as, and that's why I wanted to ask you too, because that's as an example of leaning on other people for advice too. However, yeah, it's like, that's such a good point. Like putting your ego to the side and just saying like, Hey, what do you think? What do you think? But also asking somebody that you trust that I has did. what you want. Right? I did. And you know, and I asked my mentor in the gym industry who are like our coaches from my gym. So I asked him too, and he has a lot of great insight through his active life mentors. So I, you know, I tend to be impulsive so, cause I get Most excited, entrepreneurs are. right? Yeah. And, but I had to step back because I'm thinking it's always going to connect. It actually works with my gym. It works with what I'm doing and thinking that, but there's a whole other business to it and a whole other commitment to it. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not fully committed in something, then I realize I have to step back yeah. and that have to have that honest, that radical honesty, that conversation with, thank you. This doesn't mean no right now, but I'm going to follow up with this. Yeah. 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 I think that was smart decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think that commitment, it's such a tricky thing because it's easy to be committed when everything's like going good mm -hmm. and it's easy. Yeah. It's hard to make, be committed when things are tough. Yeah. Right. Yes. And so when you think about the things that you're committed to in your life right now, like your marriage, mm -hmm. your kids, your gym, yeah. your podcast. I mean, you got a lot of commitments just right there. And yeah. I'm not even listing <laughs> probably half of them, right? What do you do to first and foremost commit to yourself, like mm. keeping your health in the right place? Yeah. I can do better at this. We all can. Yeah. You know, We're not perfect. Yeah. No. I w make it a habit to get up before my children, to do my praying in the How morning. How old are your kids? So everybody knows. <laughs> My, so we're a blended family. And so my son is 10. My daughter is nine. My other daughter is eight. She's about to be nine. And then our, our youngest together is four. So four under the age of 10. Yes. Busy. Yeah, we were very busy. So you get up early before that. I try to do the same thing too. Because mm -hmm. it's like, otherwise it's just, it's off to the races. Oh, and I want to get in up. bed with my baby and cuddle. <laughs> she likes to sleep. <laughs> it's so hard. Right? So you get up and what do you do during that time? Uh, this is something new. Since you've been in my life, I have, yeah, yeah. I have, I use the Bible app and I do the, and I do that every single morning. Do you use like the devotional ones inside yes. of the Bible app? Mm -hmm. The ones I give you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So two of my best friends have devotionals in that Bible Oh app. really? Oh, share yeah. that with me. So Lydia McLaughlin has okay. a faith one and then Alyssa Circle has one too. Okay. Yeah. It's all about identity. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Identity. And mm -hmm. you know, actually whenever, whatever season, season I'm in, I also look and search some things. And there was one on blended families oh, during our custody that. battle. It was really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's new to me. It's a little uncomfortable, but I'm doing it. And being so you're consistent. filling your, your cup up with the word of God. Yes. Which is, you know, it talks about in the Bible. I can't remember the exact verse, but that's the living, the living water. Like it's actual, mm. like you won't go thirsty if you drink from that well. Mm. And, you know, we talked about cup overflowing in the mastermind this week, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah, you have to look and see where is your source. Mm -hmm. If your source of filling yourself up is external validation, right? People telling you, Brittany, you're amazing. Yeah. Your coach is saying, oh, I love working for you. That's external validation. It's going to run dry, mm -hmm. you know, because you're getting it from dead water, basically. Yeah. We love those people, but it's like, you know, we got to get it from the living water, the source of life. So, well, it's interesting you say that because that shift of going from hit it with Brit to power and that human brand and that identity shift was really difficult for me. So it took mm -hmm. some time. And then just this year, that's where I started to feel more like myself, more authentic. And that's a fear of mine of not being able to feel like really feel and be me. Aww. Yeah. 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 So it's been, so thank you. But yeah. So, well, I, th I think it sounds like what you had to do for the gym rebrand, you know, is get rid of your ego, mm -hmm. obviously. And ego stands for edging God out. Oh, mm -hmm. I haven't heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so now you've invited God in. 
to your life and your business. I'm not saying you didn't do that before, but mm-hmm. really like in an intentional way in the brand, everything. It's, yes. like, it's not about Brittany. Mm-hmm. It's about, you know, empowering people, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. helping people feel healthy, helping the coaches be successful. Yeah. So, okay. So you get up in the morning, you do your Bible devotional. Yes. What else happens? It's my brain fuel. Anything else that I want to add to that? It's either I use the growth app for some prompts for gratitude or just free write in my journal. I actually type, but I just bought a journal because I know how much more impactful it is to write. Mm -hmm. So, um, or I read. So a good like 45 minutes to an hour of myself before just before get, the chaos just, happens. Yeah, you get filled, you get filled up here. And mm-hmm. the reason why I ask these granular questions, I like to ask everybody this because nobody does it the same way. Yeah. And you have to find your version mm-hmm. of filling yourself up in the morning right. and like the things that are going to set you on your, you know, the right path for you. So I know health is a huge thing. And I think entrepreneurs don't talk about their health enough. Mm. I remember in the beginning stages, like I would sleep maybe five hours a night. Yeah. And I, we used to sell these things. They were called e-shots, which they still sell them. But anyway, (laughs) I would drink, I'm not even joking. I would drink like six of them a day, which I think each of them had like a hundred milligrams of caffeine. Mm. Like this is like, so not healthy. Mm -hmm. And I'm over here like preaching health and wellness. And I didn't realize it. Like you just kind of, you get in bad habits, you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And I didn't realize until probably like a year or two ago, like sleep is so important for your health. Mm -hmm. So I know there are entrepreneurs listening in right now because every entrepreneur I talk to has trouble sleeping at some point or another. What would you say as a health and wellness expert are some things that we can do to have better sleep? Oh, you're probably talking to the wrong person because I sleep very well. But, I but sleep there's something you great. do. That there's something you do. And, but I always wasn't. I was not always like that. Okay, so there's a process. We're gonna we're gonna deconstruct the process right now, oh. live with Brittany. Interesting. Well, I see. If I come, if I were comparing to what I used to do, it was I was always waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Would be at the gym at five. That does not work for me anymore. I want to be home with my kids in the morning, and I like to sleep in till six thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. So that works for me. That that shift, and there was a lot of guilt too. Mm. A lot of guilt with that shift of not getting up and going to the gym with my people in the morning and my community right away. So, but I realized but your that sleep. Shift too. Oh, oh, so let, exactly. Thank you like so much. You Once I turned 40, that has been something I'm still trying to figure out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to actually go get blood work specifically for my hormones you should. because there has been a little bit of a change. I can tell. Well, that was the whole reason why I bring up like, um, the, the sleep thing. It's been a huge focus in my life mm-hmm. because I actually got my hormones checked and it shows that I'm in perimenopause. I'm uh. 36, like I'm young and that, but it's all the years of overusing caffeine. Mm. And you know, from his little shots and yes. lack of sleep. And it's like, they said I can reverse it if I focus on my sleep and like do those things. But uh, most entrepreneurs, you know, have that imbalance, mm-hmm. you know, of the sleep and the caffeine oh, and yeah. all the things. I do not away. use my phone. Okay. That is huge. I'll tell you right now. Right before bed, you don't use your phone? No, no. I have committed. Do you hide it somewhere? No. I'm good about, I'm disciplined with not using my phone. I know Ooh, if, I like if, if, I, if I wake, you guys. <laughs> if I wake up in the middle of the night, which is not a lot, I'm very lucky. My daughter, she was, has always been a good sleeper, the four year old. So never Aww. had to really experience getting up a lot with her, but the phone from 9 PM to usually when I'm done with with every with my brain fuel in the morning, seven thirty is off limits. I don't need social media. I don't need to see my email. Good. And that has really helped with everything that us entrepreneurs. It's like it's the thing. It what, calms what your brain. Yes. Calms your brain down. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Food is huge. Nutrition is. Huge. I I don't like that I eat so late. We have activities until eight. Last night we had a game until nine fifteen p.m. I'm, I'm with ate, you on that. I yeah. ate dinner at ten thirty last night, but I made sure like we get healthy meals and we eat. A well, let's dinner. talk about this because I think there's a huge myth around not eating late. I wonder that too. Because, I don't, well, I talked to my, actually my hormone doctor about okay. it because I told her, I said, here's the predicament I'm in. I'm mm-hmm. not going to get home until nine o'clock. Yeah. 
and I'm gone from five to nine. I don't want to eat fast food. And no, right? and I don't want to eat at five o'clock. Right. And so she was like, that is such a myth. It matters like what you eat throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Most important. And like before you go to bed, she like for her, she's like with you, it's protein and veggies at night. Like protein and veggies is the number one thing. And I feel like I have like seen a difference yeah. with my sleep since I've like just took out the rice at night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it, I see, I, as much as I don't like, like eating that late, but, but you we have stress to, you to our clients and to all of our members, you know, the whole conception, the whole misconception of, or just the idea of not eating past 8 p.m. And we don't say those words, but it is, I'm very interested to learn more about that and to see okay, if there was homework. a study of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have homework because I think everybody's schedules are getting stretched mm-hmm. where when we were kids, I mean, I don't remember, it, it, sports weren't this intense no. for kids. Gosh. You were home by 6.30. Every, every You should see my and- calendar. <laughs> I actually just hired a house manager. It was recommended to me and it How was the best, best thing that I've ever done. And that's only once a week. Oh yeah. And girl, if I could, if I could I got bring her time. more. Yeah. Oh. But yeah. well, just, uh, you know, me being in New York city, mm-hmm. I had to bring in, my mom lives with us. Okay. Um, but I brought in my mother-in-law too. And I gave them the whole calendar all drawn out. Everybody knows where they need to go for kids. And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to need a vacation after this. Yes. <laughs> like, it's like yeah. everyday life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but we're, we're busy. Just, and when people ask you, you just, you just do it. Yeah, You're you used do. to it. Do you, do you, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> Ooh, reverse. <laughs> do you thrive on pressure and chaos and I I used to okay but the more that I've healed my Mm. nervous system and done a lot of like just like deliverance Mm. from a lot of like honestly demons that were in me I don't like that's why I think being here I'm like (gasps) I'm not used to this where I used to love the chaos but that's actually a trauma response oh okay so let's (laughs) Let's, let's talk let's, about let's, that. Let's get on that. Or let's just do that at your retreat, please. <laughs> well, no, that is what I want to talk Work about because, me. because, you know, at that retreat I'm hosting, I'm like, everybody's like, what are we going to do? What yeah. are we going to do? And I'm yeah. like, listen, it's about actually like refreshing. So the calendar isn't going to be packed with a million things because that's actually what you, what you need is you need like chill. You don't need an itinerary. Yes. Ugh. Yes. Like our bodies need that break. Mm-hmm. Our minds need that break. But the reason why we tend to always have to be so busy is because it's a worthiness issue. It's, I only feel worthy if I am in chaos. Cause that means I have a lot going on and it means that I'm helping people. And it means that I'm worthy of the money I'm making. And then nobody could say why, you know, why is she successful? She doesn't do anything. Oh my gosh, you're in my brain. Okay. Right? Well, every like, oh, look, look at me. Look at my yeah. calendar. No, you know, every back high to achieving back to back woman meetings. struggles yeah. with that. Right. right? They're like, well, what more can I do to prove that I'm worthy of the money I'm making? Mm-hmm. And it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. I remember like I was making like a ton of money and if I had nothing to do, I literally didn't have anything to do in my schedule. And I was like, God, like my team didn't need me anymore. I had a team of 90,000 people in my, in that first network marketing company. Mm-hmm. And I had created so many leaders, millionaires on my team. And I'm like, oh, God, nobody, my phone's not ringing. Cause people would go, your phone must be ringing all the time. I'm like, no, like I've helped them. Like they're, they've got their own teams and they're doing yeah. their own thing. And I was just so unneeded. And my ego at the time was like, wow, like you suck that you're not needed now looking <laughs> Yeah. No, this was me a year ago Okay, but when this I is moved into the new thing. facility and I built my dream team and I built the team mm-hmm. that I wanted for 10 years. Yep. Exactly. Wow. And I was feeling stuck. And when you should just be enjoying it. Right. <laughs> and, I, and that's, but everyone's like, are you going to, are you going to franchise? Are you going to build more locations? And I'm just like, I don't no now because I'm not, I feel like I'm not contributing. My mm-hmm. team's got it. Mm-hmm. What am I going to do next? Yep. It's that what's next, what's next mentality. I have to be busy. Yep. And I kept saying to people, I'm just going to sit here and process it. I'm going to process it. I did not process it. Not, not as I Maybe wish Maybe for I'd. a day. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's on to the next thing. Yes. Next podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But that is a worthiness thing mm-hmm. because, you know, can we make millions of dollars a year and work four hours a week? Do you feel comfortable with that? Uh, no, I would feel guilty. Exactly. Yeah. But so I've gotten to the place now where I've done so much work and I realized that like the busy work isn't actually what's fruitful. 
Mm. And it's actually not like building the kingdom of God, but me being at my best authentic self, like not being busy, not being chaotic. That's actually what's going to build the kingdom, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's going to take millions, millions and millions of dollars to do that. So of course I would be given those resources and I have the time and space to look and see what else needs working on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a good lens. Yeah. You need to but, open up that lens. So that's where like, you know, everybody listening in right now, it took me so long to get there. And I know Brittany's on that process of getting there right now, Yeah. but I think it's important to point out that like you struggle with it. And I did too, because I know people listening in are going, I need to have more going on. Yeah. And you know, it's when I reached out to you and committed, so many things happened right in the beginning. And there was a point where I was almost going to say, I, I, I committed to this, but I don't think I have the capacity. Tore my Achilles and then- You're going through the custody going battle. Through, yeah, the custody battle. And it was so heavy and so much, but I'm so glad I stuck with it. And mm-hmm. it was, oh, I know, <laughs> I know. And just had to really just, you know, navigate through that, that uncomfortable discomfort. And it was, it was a challenge. But when we're talking about this, the community has been so supportive. You've been so supportive and, and patient because I'm thinking I'm not giving enough. I'm not contributing enough to, to, to your community. So that's our, that's in our mindset all the time, but the, all that happened for a reason. Yes. Instead of, you know, why is this happening to me? It's what is this doing for me? It really did force me to slow down and open up the lens. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it also hopefully gives you the perspective of it's okay to try to like you yeah. were in a season of just trying, like you're just, mm-hmm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to just, I got to just make it through. Like you had a lot of storms you were in and I used to be in the camp of saying, if you say you're trying, you know, you're failing. But now I'm very much believe that like sometimes all you can do is try mm-hmm. like, you know, and when you have all of these things coming at you, it's like, just try to give your best every single day. Yeah. And sometimes you're going to fail. Sometimes you're not going to show up the way you want to show up. And that's okay. Yeah. Because if you're surrounded by the right people and the right mentors, I think everybody has grace mm-hmm. on the trying. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's where like our community, I think is special because it's feminine and there's a lot of grace <laughs> that happens. But why do sometimes like these high achieving women want to go into these really masculine, like where they will take no, mm. they will take no prisoners. You know, like if you mess up, you're out. And I know some women that even run their programs like that too, where it's like, if you show up two minutes late, they will kick you out of the group. Really? 100%. Yes. Well, and I'm, I, like, I'm so curious about this masculine and feminine energy the, situation. Well, yes. Yes. Because we actually just started talking about this in my small group coaching and I'm missing it today <laughs> for this. And I was like, I love you guys. Don't talk too much about it without <laughs> me. But th- this, that is that masculine. And I've always felt that because I've had, because I was when I was a single mother, I had had to to be. be. Mm -hmm. So I'm stepping into this different energy, especially for my partner and, you know, and, and for us to be more powerful and stronger together as well. So I think the best way to put it for me now as a Christian is the masculine for me is almost like living your life. um, If you're completely masculine, like all you do is, is, you know, live out of the survivor mode and the protector and Mm. the, you know, I got to hunt and kill and all the kinds of things to protect and survive. Okay. That is the human way of doing life. Okay. Mm. But the feminine way of doing life is actually living with the Holy spirit in you. This is how I look at it. Okay. And this might be completely wrong, but this has really helped me. There's no right or wrong. Yeah. yeah, This has really helped me as like a female is just going, okay, I want to, I need to have a balance of both. Like I got to sometimes have that hunter gatherer mood, like when I have to provide for my family and a protector. Right. But also I want to have a balance of letting the Holy spirit guide me in all I do. Mm -hmm. And that takes a flow and it takes trust because you can't know all the answers. There's the word trust. Right. Yeah. It's living in faith and going, okay, I don't know my next move, God, but like, I know you're going to, you're going to give me the download. You're going to bring the right person into my life. You're Mm going to, and it's trust, 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 trust Mm. every single step of the way. And being like that in your marriage too, Mm -hmm. because it's really easy, really easy to love a man, trust a man and be in your feminine when a man is like doing everything right. Mm -hmm. When your husband's like, 
I got my growth game strong. I'm providing financially, emotionally, you know, physically. I'm a great dad. Like he's got everything going on. But we know that's not the case 100% of the time. Everybody goes through seasons just Mm -hmm. like we do as females. And what it takes in a marriage is you've got to love even in the hard seasons when the man sucks. Mm. You know, let's just give it that word. He sucks. But how do you still trust God in knowing that he's going to make everything get right with your husband. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And I've had, and that's where I had to step into that Mm -hmm. in the past year because his prior, like even like for, for Joe, you know, his priority was his children during this battle. And I was like, what about me? You know, I was just, uh, what's going on? And I just had to step back. You're trying to control everybody around you. There it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm completely aware of, and, but I also want to be told that, like that's how I'm coming across too, because it's, it's, that's what the masculine was coming out. Yeah. So, but, and and that's also a stronghold situation. Mm. Like so much of this is, it's all spiritual, right? Yeah. So uh, you have a stronghold of, um, you know, the manipulation and control to get your way. Cause that's what makes you feel safe. You don't Mm -hmm. do it like consciously, like I'm going to try to control everybody Mm -hmm. around me, but you're going and saying, how can I make sure everybody does what I need them to do? So I feel safe. So I don't get back into the situation that I was in, you know, right. when, and at 30 years old. Mm-hmm. So that's a trauma response. And yeah. you just have to give that to God. And that's the thing. I have never really fully grieved Ooh. through all of my traumas. I have always just submerged myself in work and became that achiever. And that's how I always coped. So I'm realizing this now at 40, 41, in the past couple of years of even dealing with more things that have happened and have come up. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm actually loving this age because the wisdom is a completely different yeah. than, than it was 10 years ago. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, we're all works in progress. So mm-hmm. you're, yeah, like you did the best you could. You needed yep. to survive. Like, so of course you, you, you know, went to work. Yeah. You got things done. And now mm-hmm. you're in a much better place because mm-hmm. of that, right? Yeah. Because of that response to it. And then I think like we have this notion that, oh, well, it, you know, how much time do I need to grieve? How mm-hmm. much time do I need to heal? And what God says is like, listen, like I can come in and touch you like this and you're healed. Mm. If that's the kind of God you believe in. Yeah. Right. And so like, you know, that's just like a word for you is like, you know, you, you, he can heal you right now from that, Mm. from those feelings, from that. He really can, you know, but the world will tell you, oh, you need to go do ayahuasca and go to the breath, you know, like you need to go do all these things. things. Yeah. When God goes, no, Mark, read Mark five and Mark nine. He says with a prayer, it's done. It's mm-hmm. gone. And that's the type of God I believe in, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. Mm. So, wow. We've, I feel like we've talked about all the things. A lot. I know. We've talked about so much stuff, but I mean, your story is so unique. Everybody's story is so unique, yeah. but I've really loved like just hearing all of the things that you've gone through and all of the people you're really empowering to be successful. Thank you. What do you think in this next transition phase you're in, right? Mm-hmm. With building up the podcast and building out this brand of mom boss maximizer, what do you think is going to be like the biggest obstacle you're going to have to overcome? <sighs> Goodness, these obstacles, right? I, I like to call them it's on little to the next. speed bumps yeah. and just slow me down a little bit to figure it out. They're not stop signs. Uh, they're not roadblocks. You know, this, this is, that's the, it's the mentality. It really is all about the mentality and the confidence in ourselves. I, you know, it's, it's funny because I just started this new adventure of email marketing. And even though I'm doing, I've done that with my gym through a CRM, which is, a, you know, the system, this is very different, like using Flowdesk and using the technology. So I realized that I created an online workout program and I sold it. And this was in 2017. And when I was looking at it and gave it away in in the email, I didn't even give myself enough credit. I'm like, oh, I can (laughs) create these things. It's one of those things. It really is about belief. It is about confidence. And just in this next season, it's about patience. Everything that I've experienced is all about patience, all about really just the consistency and the discipline and the, and focus and really just be at and utilizing my strengths. So even just when I asked you yesterday, should I hire a VA to 
to, you know, do the things on Canva because I could go down a rabbit hole. I want to bring my creativity side, but that's not necessarily my strength. Yeah. I know that that's, and that's what I'm trying to teach women is unlocking their potential, finding their strengths, because we tend to always focus on what I'm not good at, what I'm not. And, and instead of really like d diving into our power and utilizing that, and that is for me helping women and not only just health and health and wellness, like I want to be someone who is a mentor that I have had mentors now, like you and all the mentors I have in the past five years since I've started a business, because it is, it's so much fun to see that. Don't, don't you like, aren't are you so fulfilled when you see yes. that light bulb, when the breakthroughs happen with women? Absolutely. And I've seen those breakthroughs happen in my gym mm -hmm. and now I'm ready for that next impact and to serve more on a different level. Mm -hmm. So in this season, I'm just going to be patient and, you know, not give up no matter what Aww. is. Yeah. Yeah. Trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. Mm, I it. love that. Well, Brittany, it was so fun having Thank you on you. the show. Where can everybody listen in to what you have going on? Well, on Spotify, on, you know, on iTunes, there's the power podcast is my gym and the mom boss maximizer. We're just about to launch the fourth episode. We have some great guests coming on. And then on my Instagram is where I utilize most of my, where you just went viral. I, <laughs> 13 and a half million views. I, it was my best friend is an educator. She's like, Britt, you need to untag me of that. So <laughs> no, and she's nervous, but it's so funny. It just was one of those <laughs> things that you never know. So know. You, right. That's, that's for everyone. Just keep you making just content. Keep making content. You never <laughs> know. Uh, it's, and it's just what, 10 seconds of just yeah. us dancing on in New Jersey. Yep. Looking like everyone's calling us Snooki and JWoww <laughs> on there and just got to laugh. And that's one piece of advice. You just got to laugh it off. Don't take life too seriously. <laughs> have fun and laugh because we don't have, it's, we have one life. Like I take care of it and got to have, and got to enjoy it. Amen. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you guys loved this episode. Make sure to take a screenshot. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below. Ask Brittany any follow-up questions. Maybe we'll have her back on the show when I'm back in New York City. Um, and I just really loved like getting to know you. So oh, thank same. you again. Love you. Thank you.